Hey all right guys, going to be saving some tomato seeds today. I've got a, <laughs> a split pink brandy wine and I've got a selection of Heinz 1350s. And I'm going to do it in two different ways. There's quite a few ways to save tomato seeds. They probably all work, but uh, I, I find the fermentation process is probably the best. Here we go then. Zoom you in and get on with it. Well, I say zoom you in. <laughs> I'll zoom you in in a minute. Right, the thing with the fermentation process is that it's the one that most closely mimics nature. When you get your tomato, sits there on the vine, ripens, plop, lands on the ground, rots away. Ooh, too cold to grow tomato seeds. So what happens is the gelatinous goo all around the outside of the seed, chemically or biologically or somehow, <laughs> stops the seed from germinating. And it sits there in the soil all over the cold months. And during those cold months, the goo is eaten away or rots away and then uh, spring comes along or the warm weather comes along the seed is ready to start growing and up it comes so for me the best thing to do is to mimic that and take the uh, the goo off the seeds and we can do that quite easily by sticking it in a jam jar and there's two ways of doing that you can either put the seeds straight in leave them three four five days or you can add some rain water or tap water that's been sat around for four or five hours I'm going to do both to see which is better. I don't think one's any better than the other. But uh, we'll see how we get on, eh? Now I'll zoom you in. Right, first thing then, grab yourself a couple of jam jars. Anything will do, really. Oop, I'll do that. And write the variety down because you don't want to get these mixed up, do you? So this is going to be pink brandy wine. So I'll just put P brandy wine. And the other one is, let's say Heinz, Heinz, 1350, I put 1350 because there are other varieties, not that I've got any, but, <laughs> right, yeah. okay then, so, pink brandy wine first, let's get these out of the way, get the tape out of the way, finish that, sharp knife, teaspoon, that's all you need, now this is split, so it's going to be a bit weird doing this one, so what you do, if that's a tomato, cut it across the circumference and you should be able to see all the seeds. <laughs> there aren't many in here, to tell you the truth. All you do is scoop the seeds out, and they are few and far between. And put them in a jam jar. I'm going to cut a few more layers out of this, I think. few more in there. This is one of the uh, the bonuses with the pink brandy wine. It was quite seedless. A bit of a jaffa. I'll tell you what, I might have to go and get another one, you know. There's not enough. Right. Not worth doing that one. Let me just try this half here. I suppose all the seeds could have migrated across now. Okay then, so there's one. <laughs> right, I'm going to leave. I'll leave the pink brandy wine for now. Oh, there's a couple now. Oh, sorry, hang on. I'm finding a couple. Yeah, there we are. They're hiding near the skin. There we are. Try and keep the flesh out if you can. It doesn't really matter. But it's just... So this one then, because it's so small, I'm going to use the water. I'll do the water method for this one. Just put a bit of water in. Put a lid on, just give it a shake up to get it get it going, get it all mixed up. There we are. And all we can do now is leave that in a warm place, warm dark place, and just check it every day. And after three or four days there should be a bit of mould growing in there. I'll leave that one right then. Fingers crossed the Heinz is a bit more successful. So let's get the squidgiest one, nice and ripe, really soft. So here we go. That's better. Look, we got some seeds. <laughs> Make sure the spoon's clean. We don't want to get cross contamination. Let's scoop them out. Oh, 
And these ones, these hinds, I am not going to put any water in. I'm just going to leave them like that. In theory being, they'll get the mould a bit quicker. Okay then, back in a few days. On the fish tank with them. In the bin with them. Right guys, it's been four days since I uh, started de-gooing the seeds. I've got the hinds here and the pink brandy wine there. I'll just do the hinds. It's exactly cord and Benny. It hasn't gone very mouldy, but I tell you what, it stinks. So the next process is to rinse the goo off. And for this probe, this part of it, you can use tap water. So I'm just going to uh, try and do it so I don't blow them out of the jar. <laughs> tell you what, I know what I'll do. Yeah, yeah, I'll put it into a glass first. There you are. Right, I've got that. That's my drinking water. I'll do. So what I'm going to do then, put quite a bit in the jar. Like that. Put the lid back on and give it the old There we are. What we're going to do then is carefully pour it away through a little sieve. And if you see any big bits of uh, tomato, you can take them out now or do it at the end, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Put them back in. Yeah. Do it again. That's good, not really encouraged, is it? And it's got a huh. show that lid away then. I'm using that for uh, jams in the future. What we're trying to do is just give it a good rinse, get all the uh, get all the bits off. That's what we're trying to do. About three or four times should do it. Till well, till the water runs clear. Now see, if I did that in there, they would be everywhere, you know what I'm like. <laughs> I'm happy with this lid, I'll tell you what, let's put that one. Isn't that weird? How weird? Maybe five times, not four. Four is done in the past, but depends how gooey they are, I suppose. Yeah, that'll do, I think. Yeah. Are they all in? Yep. Yeah. Right. Put those, to, put those to one side, silly Billy. Right, just going to get rid of this water. Right, what needs water in? Oh, they need water over there. Right, what I'm going to do then, I'm just going to rinse these, sort of spray these, if you like, into this big bowl. Just to make it easy to get the, the um, little bits of tomato flesh out. There we are. Well, I'm going to go and get my phone. I'll show you something. Right, here's the seeds in the bowl, and this is what's good about doing it this way. Any that are no good would float. Any ones that are damaged, any ones that haven't germinated properly, and the, the, the viable ones are at the bottom, they've sunk, and luckily these have all sunk. Yeah, so what we do, I'm trying to get some of those bits of flesh out. Or not bother, it doesn't really matter, there's no big bits. Uh, no, I'm going to leave it actually, I'm going to leave it. Yeah, any big bits I can push to one side when it's on the uh, the drying paper. And that brings us nicely to the drying. Okay now, time to dry the seeds. And what, when I say dry the seeds, I mean dry the surface of the seeds. We're not trying to dry the insides of the seeds. 
at this particular stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this back into here very carefully and catch the seeds one more time. <laughs> Save that water, no point wasting water. Oh, things are dear enough these days without wasting it. Actually, that's good because all... Ah. That's good because a lot of the... Uh... Yeah, that is just tomato flesh come out of there, so that's good. Brilliant. I didn't realise that would happen, so there we are. Bonus, I've learned something every day. Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, yeah. There we are. Little the seed stuck there. <laughs> right, finish with that. Right, drying. You can use lots of different paper for drying. Um, probably best not to use kitchen tissue because it'll stick to the seeds. Um, best thing to use is a coffee filter if you've got it because it's made to be wet, you know. Brown Amazon paper, you know, the packing paper is good. Junk mail envelopes, they're good. Not glossy though, just the brown ones if you've got them. White will do. Or even at a push, A4 envelope. A4 envelope or A4 bit of paper. So what we do now, just drop on here. Here we are. I'm just going to spread them around a bit. Oh, someone's calling me. Not bad actually, that's come out better than I thought. There we are, let's get rid of that. Back to the older mobile phone. Where would we be without mobile phones? I was on a blooming YouTube thing yesterday called Creator360. And someone asked a question, well, what do you need to film with? And the guy, the guy there, he's got like 15 million subscribers. He said, well, when I first started, you needed this, you needed that, you needed this mic, you needed this camera, you needed try. He said, all you need these days is a mobile phone. <laughs> and he said, these, the mobile phones these days, the camera's 10 times better than what I started with. True. All right, here we are then. Back to the, <laughs> back to the filter paper and the drying of the seeds. So there they are, look, it's on the, sat on the coffee filter, just push them around a bit. Again, I'm trying to get them single level. All I'm doing now is leave them for an hour. And what we're trying to do, we're trying to dry the outside of the seeds, not the insides. We don't want the, the, the filter paper or whatever paper you're using to, we don't want it to cup in a reaction, the inside water out. We want that to happen naturally on a plate. We want that to just dry in the air. All we're doing here is getting the outside of the seeds dry, ready for storage. And the next stage. Okay, so I'll bring you back in a bit. Well, there we are, guys. That's been about an hour now. The filter paper's dried up. Let me just show you on my old uh, mobile. Well, there we are, all dried up, look. This, <laughs> these little black bits are uh, because I put it on the veggie pod and some dry compost blew onto it. So all I'm going to do now is just let them carry on drying. I'm going to use them a little Chinese food container. Drop the seeds in. Yeah, most of them fell off. The ones that didn't fall off are um, still got a little bit of tomato stuck to them. Oh, come here. Brilliant. And I got the seed packet ready. Welsh Heinz, collected on the 26th of the 8th. Notes, tasty. So I leave that there. I'm lucky I got a tropical fish tank, so I just put that on top. Constant 25 degrees, so I just dried them out in another couple of days in the bag. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Right, one more thing to do when they've dried out and they're in the bag, or before you put them in the packet, sorry, what you can do is one more check for viability. And what you do then, take two or three or four seeds, scatter them on wet tissue paper, just like you would if you were chitting seeds, leave them somewhere warm, 27 Celsius for a couple of days, maybe a week with tomatoes. If they start shooting, brilliant, you've got good seeds. I'm not gonna bother, they'll grow. Well, I've got enough anyway, Sophie. Right, 
I probably mentioned earlier in the video about um, saving F1 seeds and everyone goes, can't save F1 seeds, oh you can't save F1 seeds. Well that's not strictly true, you can save F1 seeds but it will take a bit of, bit of effort. Let's um, think of an example, oh, we've got some tomatoes here actually, hang on. Right, this tomato, whatever it's called, was bred by somebody from these two. So a nice big tomato and a nice red tomato to make a big red tomato. Save the seeds from this F1 hybrid and next year plant them. So say you plant, uh, I know, say you plant 10 seeds. 10 seeds grow. The vast majority of pollination in tomatoes happens in the flower so the male and female bits in the flower do their thing. There's not much that comes in from outside. So you grow these 10 new plants and you're after this. Now some will end up like this, some will grow like this and produce this fruit, some if you're very lucky may grow this. Two out of the ten may grow this, okay? So there we are, we bin them and we save seed from this. So this is now an F2, so we save all the seeds from this. Next year we plant ten seeds. This time you may get four of these, four plants producing fruit like that, and three each of these or, or any other combination and some could be sterile. And you keep going and going and going and when you get to the fifth generation of doing this the chances are you'll have 98% of these and the odd one or two throwbacks. And by the time you get down to the seventh, eighth, ninth you've probably got all of these. So it is possible, if it is possible at all with this particular tomato plant, might not be possible. Some you can, some you can't. So when someone says to you, you cannot save F1 seeds and grow from them, you can. You may end up with the throwback to the parents or some strange offspring with a growth on it, a bit like the ones that Danny sent me. Um, you might end up with these. Give it a try. It's good experimenting. That's exactly what I'm doing with my potatoes. I got these uh, true potato seeds. No idea what I'm growing. <laughs> Could be the, uh, the new Digwell Diner potato. There's a lot more to this guys, there's some um, dominant and recessive genes, there's male, female, there's segregation, there's subdivision, it goes on and on and on. But the further you go down from F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so and so, the more true plants you'll get. Hope you've enjoyed this guys, just a rough guide to saving your own tomato seeds. Save the coffee paper, filter paper, seed saving, don't want tomato flavoured coffee tomorrow. <laughs> Look after yourselves, take care and I'll catch you on the next video.